Take it anymore. Oh, I do the live ones too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theater. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit. Stop it now, I need it. Yeah. Hello. And welcome back. We are breaking up with RBS. This is episode number 41, and I am Tony Santabria. And I'm JDK Winnikin. We are here once again to debunk the junk. How you doing, Tony? I'm doing very well. Thank you. I brought along a special guest with me today. Yeah. If you're watching on our YouTube channel at Breaking Up with RBS, you can tell not only are Tony and I sh sitting in our different spots, we shifted, which is already kind of uh, already strange, a thing. Already weird. Mm -hmm. But we have somebody in studio with us, and it's not just anybody. It's not it, Tony. It's Who not just it? anybody. It is drum roll. Hubby Dave. <laughs> Hubby Dave. <laughs> just one word. He just has one name. Yep. Like one. Prince, mm -hmm. like Adele. Mm -hmm. There's Hubby Dave. Hubby Dave. And Hubby Dave, you should explain who Hubby Dave is. He's not just some random person named Hubby Dave. No, he is my Hubby Dave. He's your husband. Yeah. 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 Welcome, Hubby Dave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on the show with us today. It's going to be a blast. I hope anyways. We're not sure. Fun. Do you know why you're here, <laughs> Hubby Dave? That's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to figure things out. Such a good sport. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, all right. I'll give you a chance to get your bearings here right, before we get you. started. Uh, thank th thanks again to all of you. If you're listening live, thanks so much for doing so. If you are listening as a podcast, thank you for subscribing and leaving a com uh, leaving a reviews for us. We really appreciate it. And of course, we have a Facebook group uh, as well under Breaking Up with RBS, where you can come and interact with us, get more content between sessions. So, Hubby Dave may not know why he's here. We know why he's here. However, right. Um, we talk about, we'll get to hubby Dave. We'll get to hubby Dave in just a second. Yeah. We, right. Okay. But if we talk about, well, we talk a lot about things that are. Yeah. BS stories. Yeah, the, 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 the things that kind of get in our way. And so if you're wanting to practice more of this, when you're not listening to us, you can always sign up for a six week self mastery course where you can practice your own stuff. Mm-hmm. With your own stories, mm -hmm. just go to integratedgrowthcoach.com. You're looking at me like I, I know. <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm sitting in this seat that's different. It, I can't remember a thing. It sort of feels like when you're in the center, it feels like you're in the captain's chair. And so, you know, that's, that's part of it. It's a little strange for me. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Integratedgrowthcoach.com has the six-week uh, self-mastery course that Tawny's put together. It is it is amazing. It's It's got a lot of the practical ways to engage in what we talk about here every week for a half hour or so. Yeah. Uh, and I think what's so cool about it is that it gives people a chance to really experience this themselves, right? They can make this personal to them. Um, you exactly. Know, it's one thing to hear about it. It's another thing to actually do it. And one of the things that we always talk about on here is that it's a matter of doing. It's, it's action that makes these changes. Yeah, that practice, right? Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about ourselves. <laughs> And we're going to talk about a lot about Hubby Dave today, but um, <laughs> but this is an opportunity. That's why you're here, Hubby Dave. <laughs> no, but really, the six week course is really an opportunity for you to be able to concentrate on you and not on us so much. Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in the end, that's that's why we're doing this is mm -hmm. to is to help those of you who want to really take a look at breaking up with those BS stories. Absolutely. So absolutely. So tied to that, mm -hmm. right? I mean, all joking aside, we know why Hubby Dave is here. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't you? Uh, why don't you let us know where all this came from, and we'll start there. I love the questions that Hubby Dave asks me when he, <laughs> when I start rambling on about this presence thing mm -hmm. and this. We talked about energy energy management versus time management last week, yeah, right? And he had some questions about that, and I thought they were important questions that I may not have considered. So we want Hubby Dave to be here. To kind of keep us grounded. Because he can right? ask he, he can ask the questions. Yeah. Ask the questions like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that is my I guess that is my role. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? 
Well, and 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 hubby Dave, you listen to you listen to all these episodes, right? You've pretty much heard all of them. Of course, pretty much all of them. Yeah. 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 Do you ask those questions a lot? What are you talking about? I do sometimes. I mean, I think um you guys engage in this conversation, this ongoing dialogue, and it's uh it's obviously very natural and and you're talking about things that are that are important and they come very easily to you guys. Um I think I'm the <laughs> I'm the other little percent that <laughs> These things don't come as natural to or as easy. Mm. So, so I, so I am the, I'm the voice of the other side, I guess. No, Stacy says, Stacy, we were talking to Stacy mm-hmm. before we came in today. And she said, you, D- hubby Dave, are the voice of the people, right? <laughs> yeah, like The voice of the people. Right. The people. Like, I think That's there's right. a lot of people out there that probably listen to us and go, Huh. Yeah, my guess is it, yeah. it isn't a small percentage. Mm-mm. My guess Mm-mm. is it's probably a bigger percentage. Yeah. I, I think there's probably more people who feel the way you do, Hubby Dave, than mm-hmm. maybe feel the way we do or can talk about it as easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's I think that's part of what we're trying to do, right? Is we're trying to change, help change that percentage a little bit. But um, no, I think that's good because these are new concepts, you know, mm-hmm. for almost for anybody. Mm-hmm. Because we've talked time and time again about how the messaging messaging that we get in you know, throughout our lives in various ways, you know, conditions us around certain ideas, certain sets of beliefs, certain things that we think are possible that aren't, that kind of stepping out of that is tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, absolutely. So I think that there were a lot of questions about what we talked about last week with energy management versus time management. Not to say that either of those are, um, but like we don't need both of those, right? Like those are both part of the picture, but we talk a lot about time management most of the time, and we talk very little about energy management. Mm-hmm. And may remember that energy management is looking inward, right? Like like steering and, and driving our own bus, the bus being our body. Right? Mm-hmm. And time management is like the school schedule, like, right? Like, uh, and so they're getting to work on time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've got to meet some of those time management concerns. But how often do we hear ourselves tell ourselves and each other, I don't have time for that. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about this last week. Like, instead of that question, maybe I don't have the energy for that. Well, that changes mm-hmm. the whole game when we look at energy. Energy is ours and time is this external sort of thing we have no control over. Mm-hmm. 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 So th- I sense that you guys had a conversation about this we, when, the ep- when the episode, when, he, when Hubby Dave listened to the episode. We did. We did. We had a conversation and, uh, I think the observation that I made that made Tony like you need to come on the show and which immediately made me very nervous because obviously <laughs> this is not what I do, but, um, <laughs> but you know, my observation was, I think sometimes when I hear, I, I think I was coming from like a, um, either or position and not a kind of both end. Oh, right? and sure. I think, I think a lot of people might sometimes when you guys are talking about these concepts, about being present instead of trying to figure out a way to or work it into their everyday thinking um they come at it like i tend to come at it and then so you black or white Mm. and and either or it's either or one or the other you're either going to be present and energy management it's all about that or you have to stick to the schedule Mm -hmm. and and um i think there's a lot of people out there that are listening to your show and they're you know, whether they're doing, listening to the show or they're doing the mastery course and they're working on this stuff on their own and they have someone in their life, they have a hubby Dave or a partner <laughs> who um, wants to be supportive and is trying to understand, uh, and trying to, um, uh, you know, get it. And it's just not quite there yet. So, <laughs> so we need to be patient with the hubby Dave's out there. And when sure. you say patience, uh, Tani's, <laughs> you know, we've been married for a long time, so <laughs> she's been very patient. <laughs> So it's definitely not an easy fix. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that, that, that black or white thinking is very common. Very common. Yeah. All, All right. or nothing, this or that. Right. So the, what was the observation Dave, when you were, when you were coming from that, that either or place, what, what was the observation? What did you say that I, brought I, you in here? Yeah, I think it was the, um, it, it takes a, it's going to, that's going to take a lot of energy <laughs> to try, you know. <laughs> Uh, that, you know, she was talking, we were talking about energy management versus time management and trying to manage all that. Gotcha. And I, and I, and I think I actually made the comment, it was more about the discipline, like the self-awareness 
it's going to take a lot of self-awareness and discipline. Mm. And that's what I think made you, that's like the crux of everything that you're, mm -hmm. that you guys are working on with people mm -hmm. is right. That to be aware, to have that kind of awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, it, it, it is a lot of work. Obviously it's worth it when you come to the end, but, <laughs> but the work to get there can be exhausting. <laughs> so, well, yeah, that, that obviously jumped out to you, Tawny. Yes. It did. Yeah. yeah. Like a, she had a very significant response. <laughs> well, well, I always, I always love, no, it's just, it just cracks me up. I'm so glad he's here. Um, it's just fun, you know? And, um, uh, when, when you come to the end, like, like awareness is just, well, we're not going to get to the end of awareness, right? We're just going, like, we are all working really hard in our lives in all the different ways we work hard in our lives whether it's around work or whether it's just existing right there's a lot that we are all dealing with and sometimes we think like oh now that i now if i'm going to consider being more self aware mm -hmm. whew, how am i going to fit that in right right but it it actually when we look at energy it's actually just an exchange right so instead of it being this this harder thing or this thing that's going that we have to add to the bucket it's mm. actually an exchange because when we start to be more self-aware we're eliminating things that keep us from self-awareness anyway we're like we're trading mm. right we're not adding we're trading so like a, almost like a fluctuating pie chart like back and forth percentage wise you're exchanging if you go if you add 30% Right. right. Kind of yeah. Yeah. You won't deduct. be adding. You won't be adding. You'll be sort of like, Shifting, okay, exchanging. instead of being unaware of what I'm spending the next hour on, I would just be aware of what I'm spending the next hour on mm. and whatever that means. Right. Because awareness can lead us to difference or ex an experience of different. Right. But it doesn't have to be an added component on to something. It's just an exchange. If that makes so sense. like so like if if I'm in the middle of my work day, and I'm I know for the next hour I'm going to be doing a working on something I'm not looking forward to, mm -hmm. difficult meeting, project deadline, something like that. The awareness of the exchange on this between energy and time would be I know what the time limit is. I've got this hour. I got to do this thing. In. The awareness and the energy would be what. For example, if I really don't like it, how well am I accepting? Look, look, I just, I don't like it, but I need to do it. Mm -hmm. Or recognizing the BS stories that come up. What if I don't finish this on time? What if it's not good enough? Mm -hmm. Where would that, like, is that as an example, where would mm -hmm. that, how would that exchange work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think about, okay, we can take out time because time's going to be the same either way. We've got this hour meeting on the books. Got it. Time, we can take it out. Of, you know, it's the same no matter what. So now we've got an hour of our experience that we can be aware of and in or be in denial, distract ourselves, mm -hmm. get lost in stories, rev ourselves up. Right. Right. That kind of energy is very depleting. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to recover from that afterwards, or we're going to be continuing to spin ourselves up about what our experience was for that hour. As opposed to if I'm in the meeting aware, Right. Okay. I know I don't like this meeting. I see. Right. right? There's, there's I'm, choice. I'm, I'm breathing into that. I'm breathing mm -hmm. into what this feels on a sensational level in my body mm -hmm. being in this meeting. I'm aware that I don't have maybe all the answers. Right. So what am I going to do about that? Mm -hmm. Right. What, what is that? What, what, how can I sort of be in that in a way that can like, like decrease the fight, flight uh, or freeze component in the body so that I can spend that hour in in a relatively calmer and and aware state and more constructive in that sense yeah well and maybe but but maybe maybe not mm -hmm. right maybe that hour is spent right just being breathing through this right i got nothing done i had no answers <laughs> but <laughs> but you but, feel better about it but I you guess. feel better <laughs> about it but i'm not leaving that meeting in a stressed state yeah yeah all for what so, I mean, I guess, are you, so you're talking about having the, the it's, it comes down to a little bit of discipline, right? To 
Oh, to, absolutely. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. To mm-hmm. not allow yourself to tell yourself yeah. stories about how uncomfortable sure. you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or yeah. how much you don't enjoy. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe that's where the practice, you know, you know, I, I hear hubby Dave, I hear you using discipline. I, I think of practice because mm-hmm. the practice would be the discipline. You know, it's like, okay, yeah. I need to breathe in, mm-hmm. soften, be aware of the feelings in my body where that's showing up. Mm-hmm. Be, you know, if there, some meetings have specific outcomes, right? You need to get mm-hmm. to, but not holding on to some sort of value. If you do reach it, if you don't reach it, mm-hmm. you know, so that would be sort of the practice mm-hmm. as well. Right. So mm-hmm. not Abs- that they're the same thing, but it seems like that's maybe what hubby Dave's getting at. Well, absolutely. Whatever we're always practicing. I can Something. be, I guess I can be <laughs> practicing revving myself up. I can be practicing um, the experience of, you know, blaming somebody else for my circumstances. I can be practicing being in a stressed out state because I don't like my current situation or I don't like how I currently feel internally. We're always practicing something, mm. right? And the more we practice anything, of course, the better we get at it. So if in, if in this particular example, if we choose to just practice breathing, practice bringing down the stress response in the body during this meeting it doesn't mean that we're not in we're not engaged it doesn't mean we don't have to be sure right because frankly when we are up in our heads all the time telling ourselves stories in a meeting how much are we engaging in that meeting yeah that actually lets you be more present right if you're out of your head and you're not giving energy to those negative thoughts Mm -hmm. And you're just focused on your breathing and mm-hmm. JD said softening. Yeah. Then that allows maybe for you to be more productive or to allow the, the answer or the, mm-hmm. the, the path that you need to take, right. Mm-hmm. To address that kind of present itself. Mm-hmm. That makes sense yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. That would be the, that's where, um, that's what makes it, that's what makes the practice important mm-hmm. because you can't hear the reality is you can't just think about it and do it. <laughs> because if you're having to think about it, I mean, you might initially, I've heard you say this many times before. Um, and again, it's why you're so patient with me because it takes me a while to get <laughs> there, but, um, you have to practice it on things that aren't, you know, important and non-stressful as trigger, critical, like, yeah, mm-hmm. because in those really triggering moments. So like a really stressful project or yeah. a really difficult meeting, if you're already kind of in that loop of mm-hmm. stressed out and nervous and angry and frustrated. Mm-hmm. And it's so easy, and our life is so easy to get distracted now. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can you can just kind of spin off into mm-hmm. bad area. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. When we but you still have the time constraint. <laughs> you still oh, have, you still have your you meeting. still have yep. your meeting deadline, and you still have your. It's not mm-hmm. you just can't again. You can't be black or white, either or. It's, mm-hmm. You have to work mm-hmm. in yeah mm-hmm. connection with mm-hmm. both. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we didn't learn when we were growing up about energy management at all. We did learn quite a bit about time management. Mm-hmm. You make sure you're here when you need to be here. Um, how, how do you, how would you teach people, young people, how to energy management? Well, I starting to teach them about their stress response from a young age would be helpful, right? Like, so that they can start to understand and and certainly it is a life process. Mm. So it's not like an eight-year-old would be able to understand, but they could start to understand that connection with their body. Oh yeah. Like or if, breath work. Yeah. Like if there's a, if, you know, if a child learns, I've seen it happen, the eight or nine-year-olds, like when they start and their stomach starts to hurt and they're, if they're taught to recognize that, mm-hmm. oh, that's what happens when sometimes when you're feeling scared mm-hmm. or when I'm feeling upset or when I'm when I don't feel like I'm being listened to. That's the kind of thing you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we don't necessarily link body with emotions. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn any of that when I was growing up. So just I'd go off of my own experience. I'd learned none of it. Now, I think maybe we are having access to a little bit of this here and there, um, but I don't think generally that we're we're doing as, as good of a job as maybe we could with the kiddos. Yeah. Because I think what ends up happening is with time management, energy management with kids, it seems like a lot of times what happens is 
whatever emotional response is happening, a parent is wanting to do something to address that response, like stop crying, right? Or, you know, th- that kind of thing. It's not, it's really about a, a pro- teaching what they think is an appropriate response rather than helping a child recognize what is actually happening in them and then going from there. And, and I would say that we've done, I'm thinking about our own parenting, you know, uh, decades that we were parenting. I think that our generation did a lot of managing our kids' emotions for them. That's a better way of saying what I was just trying to say. Yeah. You just said it much better than me. Okay. Well, I don't know if it was better. I don't like to compare. Does that happen a lot, um, Happy Dave? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Anyway, man, um, managing their emotions. Yeah, yeah. So then, do they even really learn to do it themselves? Right. I- except to know, like in their head, okay, that emotion is could be problematic. So, you know, do do this with it, right? Mm-hmm. Like we think about the unpleasant ones, like anger and sad, and and those sorts of things. We don't necessarily have them learn to let it be mm-hmm. in their body, and that it's okay. We're trying to manage the behavior around the emotion for them. And then get it to stop. Yeah. And so then they learn, oh, this emotion is a bad emotion. Yeah. Or or I'm not allowed to have this emotion because people don't have time for it. <laughs> right. Or it's embarrassing if it's in public. Yeah. Well, I was, sure. I yeah. was just going to say, I, a lot, I wonder how much of that external fo- external things, you know, influence that, right? Mm-hmm. If, if I know that I've seen that where. Uh, and experienced it. It's funny now because as grandparents, it's it was different when you're the parent, right? People say that all the time, and this is this conversation and highlights that. Now, as a grandparent, when I watch kids having a meltdown, it's far less irritating <laughs> to me, <laughs> and I am much more patient and just allow them to be and have that experience and just let them kind of work it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if it was my child that was doing that, mm-hmm. it was it was like there wasn't time for it, or there or there was the appropriate behaviors. Right, depending on where it was happening and right. what was being. And I think too, we've talked about this before. This is not really probably in the topic that we're, but I mean, um, it, we've talked about it before where there's this desire to make our kids feel a certain way mm-hmm. and to protect them from bad feelings. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's part of life. We've talked about this. We, you know, you you have to let people kind of experience these because if you don't allow them to have those experiences, if you don't allow them to process that, then um, they're not going to have the tools. Mm-hmm. And so um, we, we did, we, we really were active uh, uh, when our kids were growing up trying to make sure that, and this is really all Tawny, to Tawny's credit, and really 100% is l- allowing them to experience some of those highs and lows and how to manage that, how to respond mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the struggle is a part of life. We don't get all yeah. the goodies without the struggle. That's true. Yeah, and it's I, true. And I think being present, right, and learning how to breathe through it, I think that's that's critical to to you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. being able to manage the when life throws you those curveballs. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and certainly sports, sports and, reference, and, right? Curveballs, good sports reference. I had to get that sports in there somehow. Yeah, it's okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. You're okay with it. Yeah, I'm a, a slight reference. I'm, I'm just breathing. Soften. Yeah, just, I'm softening. You're managing yeah. your energy. Totally. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, you know, it's I think too, like you know, when when. <clears throat> The things that we care about the most, the people we love the most, part of that in the long run is when they go away, there's going to be grief. Mm-hmm. There's going to be sadness. Mm-hmm. So the things that you care the most about at some point are going to be a source of some sort of pain or difficulty. And if we're not being taught that, I I don't feel like I got those lessons until a little later in life, mm-hmm. um, that those things all were a normal part of things. Like I negative emotions for me was as quickly as I can get away from them, the better. And, uh, so I, that resonates a lot. I think that, that we managing emotions to end them, to keep them calm, to keep them happy, um, doesn't really prepare us, you know, hence why we might have a lot of people listening to a show like this, Mm -hmm. right. Learning how to, learning how to, um, integrate these things together. And, and even learning that there's wisdom there. There's, there's yeah. wisdom in these emotions. There there, is. And, and if we just let them be, oftentimes, I think you said this earlier, Hubby Dave, that 
you know, in a in a calmer or present state. I don't always say calmer necessarily because it's not always true in a calm state either. True. Right. We don't want to mislead, but in a more present state that things might, you know, ideas or thoughts or feelings or or insights might just arrive. Mm-hmm. They Absolutely. do a lot. Yeah. They do a lot from that. <clears throat> Particularly when somebody's been given the space to to feel them mm-hmm. recognizes that they aren't a threat mm-hmm. to them. I mean, I've experienced that quite a bit. So yeah, it's one of the reasons why we do that. And it's why it's so good to have questions mm-hmm. like this and, and insights because you know, some of this feels fundamental, right? And sometimes the questions seem fundamental because this is just an area where we haven't spent a lot of time mm-hmm. historically growing mm-hmm. up. Absolutely. Anything Absolutely. else you want to ask Hubby Dave? You got I, like 45 seconds. Well, I'm going to ask Hubby Dave a ton of things on the way home, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, we don't have enough time. <laughs> awesome. Well, how was, how was this for you, Hubby Dave? It was good. It was good. I, um, I tried to use some of the practice to start just because <laughs> at first it was very, very intimidating. Well, I think you did great. Yeah. I well, think thank you did amazing. You. Fun. So mm-hmm. come back anytime. Mm-hmm. Hubby anytime. Dave. Okay. Yeah. You're in good company. I am. (laughs) (laughs) And thanks to all of you for uh, listening to this episode of Breaking Up with RBS. We will be back next week to debunk some more junk uh, to help you out. Be sure to check out uh, the six-week mastery course over over at Mm integratedgrowthcoach.com. And uh, check us out on your favorite podcast provider on our YouTube channel and at our Facebook group, Breaking Up with RBS. Until next time, I am JDK Winnegan. And I am Tawny Santabria. See you soon. Thanks, hubby Dave. Thank you. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theater. You're really quite good. Quite a sudden harmful habit. Stop it now. I'm leaving. Yeah. I don't think he felt anything after the crash. Who's that guy, Yeah. I'm in my groove. Here we go.